Okay, yeah. right, cool. Thank you. Need, um, need lots of help today. Yeah, oh, I understand um, Mike Pettit zooming in. Yeah, okay. So, um, and I'd just like to remind everyone that the meeting is live streamed. Thank you. So um, welcome everyone to um, our service delivery committee meeting today. And um, we have, um, I, I, there's, there's Mike. Great, great to see you, Mike. Good. Yeah. Can you hear us all right? Yeah. Good. Excellent. That's great. Cool. Uh, so now we start off with apologies. And I have apologies from um, Mia Susan uh, for personal reasons. Um, Thank you, Phil. And a second to thank you, Lou. All in favour, please say aye. aye. Okay, it's carried. Thank you. And I hope you'll be with me with my mask. I've just got a, a cold and I didn't want to um, yeah, pass it on to others. Yeah, thank you. Now, are there any disclosures of members' interests? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, okay, excellent. Are there any late items? Great. Okay, so we'll confirm the order of the meeting. Is that right with you, um, with that door? Yeah. Okay, thank you. So Andrew's gonna move in a second door, please. Um, Roger, all in favor, please say aye. Aye. Against, carry, excellent. Right, so now we move on to the confirmation of the minutes of our previous meeting on the 21st of March. So those are on pages eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, um, and 15, 16, 17, 18. Nothing of concern to anyone? Or? Excellent. Okay, so Bruce, you're going to move. And Lou's going to second. All in favour, please say aye. Aye. Against, carried. Thank you. So now we move on to our first substantive item, which is the Passenger Transport Depot Lease Agreement. So I welcome Eric to the chair. Thank you, Eric. Great to see you here today. There's been a lot of work going on about this. Uh, so great to have you here to update us and to um, let us hear um, about the lease of agreements. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Madam Chair and members of the committee. Um, so you got the report in front of you. Just as a quick update, we're just working with the Regional Council on um, um, with them in terms of their procurement of their new contract um, and getting these lease agreements um, signed and underway is one, one important part of that. Um, and we're still on track for a, um, a contract start in I think it's the, what, the deferred service in January. So on track for that, for the new contract. Um, can I take the report as read? Any questions? Yes, Liz. No questions, but happy to move. Yeah, yeah. I think that's a, for me. It's a uh, we've been we've talked about this. We know that we need land uh, for Waikato Regional Council to be able to fulfil their obligations, and very much looking forward to a fully electric fleet starting from January twenty twenty four as well, which I think is a really good uh, positive move. So I'm happy to move the recommendation. Oh, thank you. Oh. No, that was actually my question. Oh. <laughs> Is it confirmed that the all electric fleet will be in place by January, which would be great? Yes. Thank yeah, that, 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 that's the plan. Yeah. I mean, so there's still um, from the regional council end, they're still um, um, confirming the contract with the preferred tenderer and then ordering buses and all the logistics that go with it. So, and then and they, they have to establish depots. So, there's still a lot of work to be done. Yeah. But that's the plan. Oh. Um, will some of the buses be of smaller capacity, you know? Or are they all going to be the larger? The, these are all the larger ones. Larger. Yep. Um, and Eric, I'd just like to ask about the Kihi Kihi lease that's dependent yeah. on um, the Minister of Conservation. Yeah. yeah, happy to revoke the status of that reserve. Like, you know, there's been... Um, a good length of time up until the piece of January 2024 mm -hmm. to get that process undertaken. Like, do you have any concerns that you know there might be delays in that, or that it will be achieved in that time frame? There is a risk there. So we've been advised that the dock turnaround could be six months okay. of that request. 
and we're still preparing the documentation for the doc approval. Um, okay. but, but there's various, I guess, um, strategies we can use to, to mitigate that risk. That's great, excellent. Okay, and Phil, have you got another question? Yeah, thanks, Madam Chair. Thanks for your report today, Eric. Um, so this is the state of, of the current CCTV in the centre. What about out on... Oh, just uh, to Phil, no, we're still, we're still on the, um, oh. the depot uh, yeah. with the bus leasing at yeah, the moment. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Cool. <laughs> Getting ahead of us at the moment. So any other questions to, to do with the um, passenger transport depot? Yeah. Oh, yes, Bruce. Uh, Eric, I mean, quite intrigues me in the rent and the rent payment dates where it's only a dollar. Is there any point? Is that a legal thing that has to be done? Yeah, there has to be some consideration for, for, for the <laughs> contract to work. Yeah. Okay. All right. So everyone's happy with um, all that discussion now. So I, I do have a mover and a second. I've got Liz moving and Phil seconded. So all in favour, please say aye. 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 Against. Carried. Thank you, Eric. That's fantastic. Cool. Yeah. So I see that Eric, uh, the, our next item is the Cambridge CCTV location update. And um, welcome, Brian. Good to see you here. And um, great to get um, an update on what's happening there as well. So I hand it over to you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, just bear with me a moment. My computer just decided to um, kick me out. That's it, I'm back. Um, so we'd, I'll take the report as read and I um, sense that there's already some questions around the table for that. Um, does anyone, uh, I, I, I'm happy to lead off because um, just some discussion prior to the meeting, there was an, just a quick request to understand what cameras there were in the Cambridge C, C, uh, CBD. Yeah, given that the proposal is uh, to actually install the camera on Tira Road rather than in the CBD. So, right. um, so Dawn's kindly arranged for some printout of the, um, the Cambridge current state. Yeah, uh, so that, uh, yeah. yeah. Would you like to explain yeah. this yeah, in I more can. detail? Yeah, yes, so we understand. So, so currently, yes, within the uh, CBD, there are, uh, cameras at um, each of the intersections down Victoria Street from Hamilton Road and then at Queen Street, then at Alpha Street, then at Duke Street. Um, then there's also a camera at the other end of the town uh, at the Victoria Street Bridge where uh, traffic at the Pope Street, Victoria Street intersection. Um, so the, the main street, as it were, has got pretty good coverage of the current intersections. So the, the purpose of um, this slight change to camera positioning is around the, uh, the Safer City strategy, which looks to have uh, automatic number plate recognition cameras installed around Cambridge to uh, capture um, or notify them of stolen vehicles entering the town. And so the Safer City strategy was to, um, as a quick win, just mount a, an automatic number plate recognition camera alongside existing cameras in the town centre. Uh, but the goal was always to have cameras around the periphery of the town uh, in a position where we would capture um, stolen vehicles before they got into the main street, rather than just finding out that they were there. So uh, this change in camera position basically um, because of a change in the methodology in terms of power supply and communications, we're able to more rapidly roll out the ones around the periphery. Therefore, the ones in the town centre will not be um, needed. Okay, thank you, Brian. Um, I think Liz, oh, sorry, Phil, to you okay, first. Thank, thank you. you. Um, so you, this is great, thank you, and happy to move the recommendation um, for the changes. But you talked about the periphery, when are they likely to be installed and, and what have you? Um, okay. With other issues that are happening around town, our cemetery, our tattoo, and now we've had Thornton Road, um, Thornton Road toilets and destroyed, which is just um, mind blowing that. Um, when is that likely to be done? Yeah, so we um, have. Uh, a lot of these things in train. So uh, Datacom, our contractor, 
Um, they've, they've, I think they've got all the cameras in their possession. They're um, uh, working with their uh, communications provider. So these ANPR cameras will use cell phone or data card type technology. So we don't have to connect them up to fiber. Uh, and we are working with supply, suppliers for electricity to uh, make those connections. Um, so yeah, we anticipate over the next um, three to four months to roll out those cameras that are in that priority list there. Okay, um, I've got a question from Mike online. So Mike, I'll let you go now. Yeah, thank you through the through the chair. A um, couple of questions. Brian, just one is um, the camera on Tito Road facing towards the traffic coming down from the highway. I understand that. Um, the one on Shakespeare and Cook Street, can you just give us a little bit more info? And I just couldn't quite take it all in. The cameras... <sighs> So if, if that camera was, the, the way that camera is facing, I totally understand why there's no need for it to be there because that T-Row camera would take care of it. But facing the other way, coming down towards that intersection um, from Shakespeare, is there a rationale why we wouldn't have that camera facing the other way? And so I guess my question is, what have we got to, to mitigate that in place already down that Shakespeare Street? Um, yeah, thank you for that question. So priority two is... A, uh, both a point tilt zoom camera and an automatic number plate recognition camera uh, in the sh um, Leamington Shakespeare Street shopping area. So we will be capturing traffic uh, coming from the other way at, a, at another camera installation in that um, commercial area. And when's that likely to take place? Uh, again, so that's the second priority. So that's yep. um, going to be yeah, in that next sort of three or four months time, time frame. And the the original forty six thousand dollars for the three cameras against the twenty five thousand for the Tito camera, is there still flexibility to use some of the difference? Some, you know, in other words, could there be one of these cameras still installed and still stay you know, around that forty thousand dollar mark? Uh, I, I guess what we'd like to do is uh, get through all of the priority camera installs and then re-examine our budget at the end because there will be some that go under and some that go over. So we'll need to just hold that contingency for the time being. Right. And my last question, and, and, and I'm asking for a friend, is the, um, the number plate recognition cameras, um, is, is it just for... Is it just the police to use for stolen vehicles, et cetera, not for like uh, no registration, no warrants, no sorts of things? Right. Uh, so certainly the automatic number plate recognition cameras uh, do tie into the police comms and, and database of stolen vehicles, but I am i couldn't tell you how police use that for matters other than a stolen vehicle. Um, certainly the camera can't recognise whether a vehicle's registered or warranted or not. Um, yeah, just but through the register, but through the number plate, you know, if they, they can. It would just be good to get an answer on that, just so the public actually understand you know, how, you know, just the, the actual purpose of the data. Yeah, I, I understand what you mean. I think we'll have to ask that question to the police and get a response from them. Thank you. That would be great, Brian. Thank you. And Roger? Yes. Thank you, Madam Chair, through you. Uh, Ryan, this diagram that we've got and the five, six that we see down Victoria Street, uh, my understanding is that you're actually taking two cameras out from the Victoria Street layout, or are those cameras still non-vehicle registration recognition. So the, ca the camera will still be there, it just won't be replaced by a vehicle recognition camera. Yeah, that, that's correct, that map you have in front of you, which is the current state, is the current cameras there, and generally they are cameras that have a broad yep. uh, look over the um, those roads and inter intersections. Uh, they will all remain in place, none of them are removed. So in, in, in case of ram raids occurring, then those cameras will still pick up the information on those. Yes, And correct. in regard to this, now my perception is in terms of this CCTV review that we went through, we actually did 
go through considerable consultation with the stakeholders, say the Chamber of Commerce, etc. cetera. Uh, this is quite a fast change to that. Has there been any further consultation with those other stakeholders in the community? And are they in agreement with this? Yes, certainly the Chamber of Commerce, uh, ComSafe and Police have been um, consulted about this change and they are in agreement. Okay, good. Thank you. Okay. Oh, uh, Lou? Yeah, thank you, through here, Madam Chair. Um, just quickly, I see in Tiamu there's uh, a re uh, fixed, repurposed in Mutu and Alexandra Street. Is that a, a point tilt and zoom or is that an APNR? Uh, so, yes, at the moment there is uh, one camera, which is a, it can read number plates and it yeah. is at that intersection, it is looking towards Prongia. Um, so uh, that camera will be removed because it's not an automatic number plate recognition yeah. camera and it will re be replaced with an automatic number plate recognition yeah. camera and an additional camera, which is PTZ, will be added. Thank you, Ryan. I think that that's quite important because as the police have indicated to us quite strongly that if they can get the entries to our main street, that they can actually identify those cars of interest, whether they're stolen or of interest, and uh, register them. So that's good. Thank you. Oh, I've got Liz in the yeah. So, hey, um, so, so um, Brian, I guess I'm just um, obviously we've had a number of meetings with the community, um, police, various um organisations and it's probably fair to say that there's been a lot of angst over the last couple of years around cameras and I'm sure that this is um, this project when it's finally finished will be you know <laughs> you'll be pretty relieved but I, I am a bit worried um, I, I, I'm, I want to make sure that having cameras on the, the two that we're, the two that we're not going to upgrade any longer so not going to move to ANPR so you're saying that the chamber has have agreed that that is um, that, that they've had a change of heart because yep. it was very clear in our last meeting that they did want those to be number plate reading cameras and the police were convinced as well that that's what was needed. So the the ram raids obviously we haven't been able to pick up the information we needed to um, because you know because those cameras just simply weren't um, didn't have the proper ability. So I haven't heard that that. Um, yeah, that they're, they're, that they're happy with uh, the not proceeding with the original plan. So obviously, are there, are there meetings that you and Philip have been to? Because Philip, you've moved the recommendation. So are you are you sure that the community, Cambridge community, is happy with this change of heart? You've moved it before, yeah. So, so, so I've had, you know, the conversation with um, the Chamber of Commerce. Uh, and we've also um, yeah, had sort of email communications with ComSafe and police and, and explained this change and they're on board with it. So uh, I guess um, the, there's, there's been, all, all along there's been different opinions and, and different uh, police officers and, and different people within the community have all um, you know, depending on what crime has been committed recently, you know, have all had different views about uh, what uh, uh, the best approach would be. So, um, but the the underlying goal was to try and detect stolen vehicles that were approaching Cambridge or entering Cambridge at, around the periphery. So, as I said, the the initial um, plan to put them in the in the town centre was just to find out were there uh, stolen vehicles within Cambridge. And it was a, seen as a quick win because it could be uh, uh, done cheaply with no additional power supply or communications that could just be mounted on the existing pole, leaving the existing camera and cameras in place and getting this extra facility. But because we've been able to um, uh, find a way to more cheaply and quickly put the cameras where they are going to be most useful, which is around the periphery of town, then that um, is the best way forward. And so there's general agreement from police and ComSafe that that is the, the best thing to do. Don't, don't get me wrong, there's no doubt that in six months time when these cameras are all in, people will find uh, another place they'd like to have a camera or they'd like to do something different again. There is no doubt about that. And, and you know, our towns are filling up with cameras 
retailers have more and more cameras which are connected to the police system now. So there's never been so much surveillance, but there will always be differing opinions about uh, where cameras should go and what type of cameras they should be. I understand that, but these two locations were chosen because we had examples where a license plate could not be visibly seen and the police could not take action because you, they had the footage, but the cameras weren't able to see the number plate recognition. So those two particular locations, that's why I'm surprised, Councillor Coles, you're in some of these meetings. This is a this is a, a turn from those meetings. If you're really confident, I will take your word that this is, um, you know, being um, canvassed and that this is the, the plan. Obviously, you've had conversations. I haven't because I didn't, I didn't think we we're in that space. Yeah. But I'll, I'll well, happily let, uh, let uh, this, you know. Yeah. Well, if I could just make one, one last reply mm -hmm. to that. If we have kept, you know, the police are confident if they've captured those vehicles coming into the town, and they know they're there, then uh, they'll have the license plate detail from these cameras around the periphery of the town, and they'll still be able to see those uh, vehicles as they pass through the town if they come into the town centre, uh, regardless of it, whether they can see all of the details of that number plate at that point. They'll have, you know, that sort of track and trace uh, that they do in terms of where did the car first appear and what other cameras did it go by. So please do use that, regardless of whether they can <laughs> see the number plate or the people in the car and every image that they've got available to them. Um, yes, Phil. Yes, I'll, I'll let Phil go because he's yeah, a response to, add to yeah. that. So I sit on the Cambridge um, Safer Community Trust as an individual, not as a council rep or anything like that. And we've updated, well, I've updated them on this and uh, there's business representatives on that, on that group as well. So. Yep. Okay, so you're comfortable with the proposal? Yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. Um, Bruce and then Roger. Thank you, Claire. Um, Brian, I was told that two of the cameras have been taken out by vehicles smashing the poles. I don't know if that's true or not, but um, what's the process when that happens to re-establishing them and getting them going? Thank you. Uh, right, so there was a power box on the, um, uh, the village green opposite the town hall that was run over and smashed and that cut off the power supply to two cameras for a time. So that, I think there's a, if it's not fixed already, there's a process underway to get that repaired. Okay, Roger. Yeah, I'm, I must admit, I'm a little bit uncomfortable. I'm sorry, Brian, about whether we've got full stakeholder buy-in on this because we've been very uh, keen so far to make sure that they've got that full buy-in and although Comsef may want to discuss it, I'm worried about the other organizations. That there seems to be a little bit of a surety from yourself that categorically, yes, they are in, in favor of it. So I really hope that they are. Um, now then, just for a point of clarification, if this one is in t -Row, that's one road where we've got it, there are really, what, three other major entrances to Cambridge, the Cambridge Hamilton Road, the Old State Highway, State Highway 1B, and then the Cambridge Road to TA. Have all of those roads also now got the automatic vehicle recognition cameras on them? Uh, they haven't presently, but you'll see they're in that priority list in the paper to put them in, in. so. So they That's will fine. be going in under this current plan, <coughs> correct. So within what kind of space of time? Uh, so some of them we can put in straight away because there's, there's no impediment to that. Others um, are going in as part of the capital works or intersection upgrades. Uh, for instance, the C2, C3 roundabout is going to have CCTV cameras for um, you know, the underpasses and oversight of that intersection. So we can't put that those cameras in until the, the roundabout's built, and that's probably 18 months away for that one. So we're still going to be 18 months away before we've got surety that we'll be able to identify any ram raiders coming into town. I mean, that to me is, I'm not happy with that, because, you know, this ram raiding is an issue in Cambridge. And I think it's our responsibility to make Cambridge a safe place and to hear that it's 18 months, two years down the track before we're going to get any solution to this. I'm afraid I'm not happy with that. 
And so I, uh, is there anything you can do about that? I, I think you'd have to give me a bit of time to um, give that some thought and come back to you, Roger. Okay, um, thank you, Brian. I've, I've got a, um, another question from Mike, and uh, we're coming to the end of our allocated time, so I'd just like people to sort of um, finish up with their questions if possible. Uh, yes, Mike. Yeah, thank you through the chair. Um, Brian, that um, AMPR camera number one on the, that was proposed on Victoria and Queen Street, um, that, that it looks like it's sort of just going uh, straight down sort of Queen Street towards Carter's flat area. It just if that camera was positioned what, where the Z station is, are those cameras able to pick up two streets like on that roundabout? Can they pick up? Could they pick up stuff coming from the CBD? and things coming up from Queen Street, from Carter's Flats? Just a question. Uh, no, it's on ANPR cameras is, has a very small focus and it's looking at one approach lane. So we'll, we'll only get, um, you know, for, and that's why it's quite key to put them in locations where, um, yeah, we can get a good clear view of each approaching vehicle. Um, right. So, hey, if that camera there was positioned though, looking more towards Victoria Street, towards the CBD, down that way, um, on that Z corner. It, it would sort of pick up cars coming up from Carter's Flat along Queen to go around that KFC roundabout. And it would, if it was directly facing towards the CBD, it would obviously pick up cars coming up Victoria Street. Now, I just think that camera is, is pretty important. It also sends a, I mean, though we've consulted and we've mentioned a couple of groups here, I mean, they are far from all the groups that that really have an interest in this. And, and the general rate, you know, raising population is, is the greatest stakeholder here, which is all of us. Um, and sometimes perception is reality and seeing some additional cameras around the place can give people a bit of peace of mind as well as being very practical. So, I mean, I would really like to, I totally understand that Tito Road um, camera and the rationale for that. Um, but originally this budget was $46,000 for this, the original three cameras, um, that Victoria Street to Queen Street camera would be an additional 15,000. It still fits under that original budget. I just really would like to get your view on if that camera was on the Z corner facing down Victoria Street towards the CBD, whether that would not be very advantageous. Um, Madam Chair, uh, I, I, I think it's probably best that we don't try and solve operational issues around this council table and, and work out, um, you know, on the fly where cameras should go. Right. Okay. Right. Yeah. So I understand that in that case, um, yeah, I, I cannot support this current proposal. And, and, and I totally understand what you're saying, Brian. I just think this needs some more, more work and some more analysis. That's a personal point of view. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Mike. Um, any other questions that's good uh, oh Lou did you want one more yeah thank you I'm going to speak a little bit in support of all this so I've actually been sitting on the Ram Rats Committee in Tiamuru for the last year and a bit and uh, we had Brian Fleming along and he just gave us an indication of something that occurred only a matter of three weeks ago four weeks ago I think it was where in a harpo they were able to identify a car that had uh, a car of interest as they called it uh, they identified that through another police car. It was identified coming into Tiamu. Uh, they were able to put a patrol car into the main street. They watched the car as it circulated, saw the patrol car, and exited Tiamu. Now, that was possibly a rain raid. They were actually apprehended again in uh, Hillcrest, and uh, they found the people had quite a, a significant history of <laughs> in caring for them. So I, I want to make the point that these cameras can work. And the situation is something that we're going to have to get used to. With artificial intelligence and all of the work, we're going to see more and more surveillance, whether we like it or not. And as I say, it's going to be a part of the society where our police department haven't got the staff to be able to be in all these locations at once. So mm -hmm. I'm going to actually move the motion. Thank you. Um, thank you. Um, I've got... <laughs> Liz and then Andrew, I'm, I'm yeah. I don't want to draw this to. Um, I, I understand. Yeah, premature, 
conclusion. Yeah. It's a really important issue. It, it is a, it is an important issue. Um, Lou, I understand where you're coming from. That's not the point here. We we if we have had numerous meetings, Cambridge Waipa, Te Amutu, you know, we've been collective. So we all agree that cameras are important and they're necessary. What we're trying to establish here is that what should be ANPR and what shouldn't be, what should be upgraded and what shouldn't be. That's what we're discussing. So we're taking out a couple of Cambridge um, cameras. But look, I, I'm happy with this, Brian, because we can always come back to this. <laughs> so I do know that the Tito... Um, main state highway was a really important new ANP uh, camera that the chamber wanted to support. So I'm going to support this recommendation because I want that one as well. But I will be coming back, and I think we should bring back that committee. I, I I'm, Councillor Coles, I, I just really hope that you know you've done your homework on on you know on this because I I, I think that there's lots of groups that have been part of these committee meetings, and they, they we we came to a consensus. And I believe we came to a really good place, um, but you're backtracking a little off what we agreed. So I, I want to make sure that we've got the community's absolute buy-in, and I, and I think Brian, you're on absolutely on the right track. Um, you know, we're all trying to do the same thing, which is to try, try and get better surveillance and the best cameras we can in the right places. So I'm happy with this, but we can always come back to some of those other, um, you know, opportunities in the future and try and bring some, you know. Perhaps we need to, you know, juggle some money around as well um, to get better cameras and, and, and if we haven't got it quite right yet. But I think it's work in progress. I don't want to stop the momentum because I know that we've got uh, lots of people, particularly in Taumuru, Chris Smith is on our tail. Um, you know, he wants to see these cameras um, and as quickly as possible. We've had enough delays, so let's keep, let's keep moving. And the but, number of plate recognition ones are going to be on the outskirts of town too. So is there into town or exit town? Yes. Yeah, have you look at it? Yeah. Yeah. I think. Yeah. I think there's been an but, established. But some of them aren't, though, aren't they? No. The Norfolk Drive right one. Some will come sooner than that. Yes. Yeah. yeah right. I think. I think we've got a program of work ahead, but this is the ones that are going to be the priorities. Andrew, have you got something? You yeah. Want just to very briefly, basically endorse um, Liz's comments because what I'm hearing here is that yes, this isn't exactly what was discussed previously, but. You've gone away with your um, team, have come up with a better solution than what that was. It's not perfect, mm. and will be it will be reviewed. But it's that's what I'm hearing that it's better than what was originally discussed. So let's let's go for it. Yeah. I think Phil already moved, um, uh, Lou, but we'll let you second. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, look, I want to thank everyone for the discussion. It's it's not been um, an easy proposal, but I think that we've reached the space where we appreciate that this has been a priority, that a new one that's been identified. It will deliver good benefits to protect Cambridge CBD. We yeah, and but that there's further work to be done with further installations planned. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so we've got a. a, a yeah, so we've got a mover, um, Phil, and a seconder, Lou, is that right? Yeah. Uh, well, we haven't voted yet. So all in favour, please say aye. Aye. Against? Like Against. What recorded, I agree okay. on mm. the installation of cameras. I am really concerned that we're looking at a large window before we get all those major incoming roads. And I have doubts about whether the consultation has been fully undertaken uh, in terms of these changes. So please. Okay, thank you, uh, Councillor do. Gordon. And Mike, did you also vote against? Uh, yes. Yeah, okay, thank you. Um, but it's carried. Thank you. And thank you, Brian. And we look forward to hearing back from you because you're going to go away and do a bit, bit more work on that. Yeah, thank you very much. Okay, our next item is uh, the Kairangi loop bent sprint uh, request for temporary road closure. Uh, Brian, are you handling that one? Yeah, or is Scott Jennifer there? Just, it's Jennifer's name's beside it. I wasn't yeah. sure whether she was connecting online, but I can certainly um, take yeah. this paper. It's a straightforward one. Happy She's not move. here. Uh, <laughs> it's a lot more straightforward than the previous one. Uh, thank you, yes. Um, so we've got Marcus moving and Andrew's gonna second. All in favor, please say aye. aye. Against carried, thank you. And then we have a resolution to exclude the public. So we've got a mover and a seconder for that. Oh, thank you, Bruce. 